Welcome back to the Block IoT. This is the first video of our Siemens Logo Masterclass series and we are going to start from scratch to teach you how to use Siemens Logo as a great tool in your industrial automation or industrial Internet of Things systems. But before we get into the details, I thought it will be useful to give you some updates about the plan for the next few months on Block IoT channel. But just to save you time, if you are not interested in that, you can just skip the first few minutes and just go right into the Siemens logo topics. So I was thinking it's been over a year since I started my journey to create practical and hands-on tutorials for industrial automation and IoT enthusiasts. So far, we haven't really followed any predefined path for videos that we share on this channel. And we've been exploring various topics, mostly for senior industrial automation and industrial Internet of Things engineers. For example, we created a series of tutorials on how to set up a Raspberry Pi 5 as a test server for IIoT projects and proof of concepts, or we showed you how to build a clustered MQTT broker to improve the reliability of your system. But guess what? Based on the YouTube analytics data, or tutorials on fundamentals and basics of industrial automation and IIoT, are very popular, particularly our videos on Siemens logo controllers are really hitting it off on the Block IoT channel. In fact, if you search for Siemens logo on YouTube, our video is right up there in the search results, higher than the videos on the Siemens official channel. So we heard your voice and I'm thrilled to share some exciting news with you all today. We are stepping up our game and launching our very first organized course, starting with our Siemens Logo Master class, which we are going to start today. The plan is building some real life industrial automation system from scratch using Siemens Logo Compact Controllers. We want this course to be useful for everyone, not just for senior engineers and IT professionals. Whether you are a junior engineering student or a senior engineer who has never used Siemens logo in your project because you've been always using other brands and vendors, our goal is to have some useful topics for you all. And once we've mastered the logo course, we are jumping into Siemens S7 1200 and S7 1500 PLCs following the same hands-on approach. And because you guys love our IIoT and advanced topics, we'll be bringing you more practical videos on those too. Plus, we're keeping our promise by inviting some awesome guest speakers to showcase their own IIoT and industrial automation projects, giving you even more inspiration and insights. So talking is enough and let's jump into the first video of Siemens Logo Masterclass. This is going to be an exciting journey especially for junior engineers or students who want to choose the industrial automation and IIoT as their career path. So let's start with the agenda and the Siemens Logo curriculum that we are going to discuss in the next few videos. I want this course to be useful for absolute beginners. I know some topics might be very basic for most of you, but they are useful for other groups of people such as junior students or technicians who just want to get into the automation. So please bear with me. If you're someone who already knows automation and you don't really need the basic and fundamentals, maybe you can watch the other video about or crash course of the logo in under 30 minutes. I'll walk you through all the information that you need to get us started with the logo. So this is the curriculum that I've been thinking about for the Siemens Logo Masterclass. For sure we can add more topics if you let me know what other topics you want to know about Siemens Logo. But for now, I've broken down the course into nine different videos. This is the first video, and in the next few minutes, we are going to start with wiring a logo, how to connect the power supply, an overview of the menus on the logo hardware. Some of you might don't know, there are just a lot of information that you can get on the Siemens logo LCD or display without accessing the programming software. And then we are going to talk about how to install the software, where to get the updates, and overall about the software installation process. 
And once we install the software, we are going to have a quick overview of different menus. And overall, by the end of this video, the ultimate goal is to build a foundation for the next videos where we are going to start building a project from scratch for using different features and tools such as using digital inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs, and ultimately we'll get into more advanced topics such as PID control and connecting uh, an HMI to your logo or maybe Modbus TCP communications and so on. So let's start with the first step of any industrial automation project, which is wiring up your power supply. Your logo controller or any other PLC doesn't do anything without power. You might already know what the power supply is, but overall a power supply converts a higher voltage to a lower voltage. In our case, we are converting an AC voltage to a 24 volt DC voltage to supply our logo. So as we explained before, some logos accept AC voltage directly and you don't need external power supply. But for most cases that use a logo with DC power supply, you need a power supply to convert the AC voltage to a 24 volt DC to power up your logo. And as you can see here, this particular power supply is three phase. That means that the inputs needs a three phase voltage. That means we can convert a three phase AC input to a 24 volt DC output. There are two main parameters that you need to consider when you are selecting a power supply. First of all, what is the input type? Is it single phase or three phase? Or perhaps it's a high voltage DC. And you also need to know what is the output voltage and the current. In the industrial automation projects, mostly you deal with 24 volt DC. So that's why we have a power supply here that gives us a 24 volt DC and the maximum output current is 20 amp. The more this amp number is, the more devices this power supply can supply power to. If you are just powering up a single logo, that really doesn't consume that much of amp. It could be less than an amp, 500 milliamp and so on, that you can get the exact number from your data sheet. But we normally use a bigger power supply, minimum 2 amp, 5 amp. Or in this example, we have a 20 amp power supply. You can use the same power supply to power up your sensors, actuators, and other PLC modules or other PLC and HMI in your control cabinet. So wiring a power supply is very easy, but be careful on the high voltage. Make sure you get help from the certified electricians for powering any electrical equipment. But in my case, I just need to connect these three pins to a three phase voltage. So I just need to connect these to my input AC voltage. And maybe we just call it three phase AC. And then on the output side, power supply normally gives you more than one output at the same time. But if you don't have enough pins you can connect these pins to a terminal block and you can expand your output as long as the maximum amp is less than the maximum supply amp by your power supply you can add as many devices as you want to a single power supply so in my case I'm just going to power up my Siemens logo and as you can see here I have two pluses and two minus so I just connect the plus all the way to my L plus pin of my logo so similarly, I connect the minus terminal to the ground terminal of my logo in the same manner. So I just go all the way here and there is a note as M on your logo device that you can connect the power supply to. So as a best practice, it is suggested to use fuses to control the maximum current between every connection. We will definitely need a fuse or breaker in your main power supply. That's a separate topic, is high voltage. You normally don't deal with that as a control engineer or automation engineer. But bear in mind, we have two different type of fuses, AC and DC. So in the inputs, you will need the AC fuse and on the output, you will need DC fuses if you want to fuse your power supply to the logo connection. Now your logo is powered up and if you just turn on your power supply, you will see that the LCD will light up and you can start programming your logo. But in real world, you need to wire your inputs and output as well. Let me show you how the wiring is done in the inputs and output. So as I mentioned, normally you will have a terminal block to extend your power supply pins. So in this case, I have a terminal block that has six pins and then I'm just going 
going to get a branch from my main power supply to this terminal block. So for now, we can just say this terminal block has a 24 volt DC and I can just use it anywhere that I need. So as you can see here on my logo, I have different pins which are marked as I1, I2 to I8. These are my input terminals. As you can see, they are not as a pair and they are just single pins. In real world applications, digital inputs uh, are normally connected to sensors such as proximity sensor or any type of discrete signal or sensors can be connected to digital input. But for wiring perspective, everything is the same. So let's assume we have a sensor that has a switch inside it and we can just model it like this. So this is how you need to wire this to your logo. On one side, you need to connect your 24 volt DC to the one side of the sensor and from the other side connect it to one of your inputs of your logo which in this case I connected it to input number one. So now I can go to my program and use this switch in my program and my logic. So that's it for the wiring of the digital input. Let's see how we can wire digital outputs in the same manner. So as we explained before there are two main type of digital outputs in Siemens logo. The first type is a relay output and the second type is DC output. A relay output is very simple. You don't need to apply any voltage or anything like that. It's just basically a dry contact that you can use it in your system. You can directly connect it to a light bulb or you can connect it to a small motor as long as the motor amp is under the allowed maximum amp on the logo. So in this logo that we have on this picture, the output is a relay type. That means the output is just a dry contact. So I don't need to apply any voltage to use the output. So let's assume I have a light bulb and maybe I'll just model it like this. My painting is not the best, but you get the idea and the light bulb has two terminals one is positive and one is negative this could be a solenoid valve or any other device so this is how you wire a relay output in a logo so as I mentioned the logo relay output is just a dry contact so you just need to wire it similar to a switch as an input so in my case I will connect my solenoid valve or my light bulb positive terminal to the DC and I connect the minus terminal to one side of my logo relay output and then I connect my other side of relay to the ground so I have a closed loop so you get the 24 volt DC from your power supply it goes to your light bulb or any actuator and then it comes to the Siemens logo there is a switch here if you just want to model it like this and basically in your program you control the status of this switch to be on or off the ground means the minus terminal on your power supply so in my case I can just add another terminal block similar to my 20 4 volt DC and this means this terminal should go into one of these terminal pins so this is how you wire the digital inputs and outputs of a logo in this example we had a relay output that's why the wiring was done like this if you have a DC output you don't need to connect your actuator to the power supply directly because a DC output in the logo or any PLC means you will get a 24 volt DC voltage on the output pin if you set it to be one or true in your program. Okay, now let's move to the hands-on section and power up our logo and go over the menus on the logo device and then we will install the software and we'll have an introduction of the software menus and so on. So now I have my logo powered up and let's just go quickly over the menus of the logo and see what we can do with that. Throughout this course, I'm going to use this demo unit which has these inputs and also digital outputs and couple of analog inputs already wired up, which makes it easy to test our program. When you get a logo, these are not part of the package and all you get is just a single logo. And we have already gone through different sides of the logo. For example, you can see the model number and different information on the right side. And you will have the network connection on the bottom and also the output pins. You will have your power supply inputs and also your digital inputs on the upper side. And you will have a slot for your SD card. You can just insert your SD card by putting a screwdriver and then just remove this slot. You can insert the SD card from this side. As you can see, it accepts a micro SD card. So don't try to take this out. It won't come out and you might just break it. So just try to insert your SD card gently and push it back in. 
So that's pretty much it. Again, we are not going to work on the logo units from now on. We are just going to focus on the demo units. Let's start with the menus. Once you power up your logo, you'll get into the main page, which normally shows the date and the time. But if you press the skate button or this button on the left side, you will get into the main menu. So I'll just move it a little closer to the camera so you can read. There are just too many options on the menu. It could be confusing at the same time. I will just try to walk you through all the necessary menu options that you need to know but bear in mind there are just too many information and you can just go and browse it and select the menu options that suits the best for your application. So first and most important option is starting and stopping your program. So right now I have a program in this logo just a simple program that I connected the input number one to the queue number one or output number one so if I just uh, switch my input number one, as you can see here, my output one will be triggered and I see the output. So there isn't really any other logic and uh, that shows that my program is running. Using this the menu and the logo, I can just stop my program. And if I just stop it, as you can see here, I can use the arrow keys to navigate through the menu and I can just hit the OK to select my selection. So right now I just stop it. And as you can see, if I trigger my input number one, nothing happens because my logic is not being executed. The second option, which is very neat and unique in Logo, I don't really know any other PLC or any other micro PLC similar to Logo that gives you this option because on the Logo, you can just uh, go to the program menu and you can edit your program without using your software. So you can program your Logo if you are patient enough, you can write a program for your Logo using this keyboard and keypads on the Logo. So we can just go to the edit program. As you can see here, I have a very simple program that my input number one is connected to queue number one. If I want, I can edit this program or I can set different parameters that is in program. I can change the program name for my logo and I can clear the program. And also I can browse through different menus such as memory usage. And this is good to keep in mind because when you are adding more features, you have to track how much memory you have left. So this particular uh, logo model that I have supports 8,500 bytes for, for the memory. And also I can use 400 blocks and return Retentive memory, I have 250. So I can just go back to the main menu again. Third option on the menu is the setup. If you go to the setup, you'll get into much more different options and you can just browse through them. For example, I can go to my AQ, which is my analog output, and I can adjust different parameters for my analog output. As you can see, I can define the AQ type or the type of analog output for my logo. In this case, my logo could support 0 to 10 volt DC or 4 to 20 milliamp DC. Some sensors give you 4 to 20 milliamp and other sensors could give you 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volts. Another option on the setup that you can adjust is the start the screen. As you can see here right now it's set to be uh, just showing the clock and date. You can set it up to show you status of your digital inputs instead of the date and time by default. And you can set up your time or your clock on your logo without going to the software from this menu and you can go to your LCD setting, you can adjust the contrast, you can define whether the backlight should be on all the time or just leave it as default which goes off after some times. So I can just scroll back and I can also change the language of my menu. If you don't prefer your logo to have English as the default language, you can go here and maybe uh, select the Dutch or Spanish or French language and other languages that you can select from this menu. The next option or the fourth option on the main menu is the network. One of the most important menus uh, here you can adjust your IP address of your device. So for example here the IP address of my logo is 192.168.0.40 and you can define the gateway, subnet mask and so on. The next option is diagnostics. 
So you can just quickly go to this menu if you want to know the firmware version of your logo. If you have connected your logo to any third party device, another PLC or HMI, you can just quickly come here and monitor your S7 connections. Also, you can check your firmware version and also you can go to the hardware section for diagnosing your hardware, such as your Ethernet port. As you can see, the network is okay. You can monitor your SD card. I don't have any SD card in my logo. That's why I get an error here and I can see my MAC address. For some application, you need to know that. And also you can go to the tools menu to see the event logs and also you can clear the event logs and even one cool feature is you can ping different devices with the logo for example here i just go to the ping and maybe i just go and ping a device on my network maybe i just ping number 100 and as you can see the ping result is okay that means this logo can see the IP address of 192.168.0.100. And the next option on the main menu is the card. So if you just go into the card menu, as you can see, you can save your program from the logo to your card and move it maybe to another logo. Similarly, you can copy from the card or even uh, copy protect. You can protect your program uh, if you don't want anyone else to copy your program. So that's pretty much it for the main menu. Let's just start our program again. And again, as you can see, my logic is being executed. Uh, my input number one is connected to queue number one. I'll show you in the program also when we get into the software, but it's very simple logic. Apart from the setting menu that I just showed you, you have another options or sets of menus on the logo that you can take advantage of. There are just nine different menus or screens on the logo. And if you want to access that, just hit the right arrow key on the logo. And as you can see, the first menu is the status of your inputs. So if I just switch my input number one, as you can see on the display, the status turns black or highlighted that shows my input number one is in the true or one state. So I just wanna do again, as you can see my number two. So if you scroll to the right again, you will see the status of Q or output same as the input as well. As you can see here right now, when I trigger the input number one, it triggers Q number one or output number one and I can monitor on my logo as well. So the third menu, you can monitor the value of the analog inputs, which is very handy for troubleshooting. For example, here I have two different analog inputs and if I just change the values of analog number one, as you can see, the value is changing and is going from zero to number 1000. Similarly for the analog input number two. And you can scroll through the menu, you can go to the next page. And if you have more analog inputs, you might have to look at them on the first page. In the similar manner, you can monitor the value of your analog outputs or AQs on the menu as well. And uh, apart from physical inputs and output, the logo gives you an option to monitor the status of your internal flags or memory. This is the area of the memory that you will use when doing the programming. They are not connected to the physical world but they are important as an intermediate memory or temporary memory that you can use in your program. We'll learn more about the flag memory in Logo when we get into the software. But it's important to know you can monitor them over here. So that's pretty much it for the menus on the Logo hardware. Again, it's a very useful feature. Feel free to explore if you have a Logo handy. And my personal favorite is changing the network, starting and stopping, monitoring input and output and also quickly changing my program if I need, which can save me a lot of time during the commissioning and maintenance. Now that we know the fundamentals for using the hardware of the logo, let's jump into the software and see how we can program a logo and what are the steps and let's just get familiar with the software. So the first thing that you need to know, for programming a logo, you need a software called Logo Soft Comfort. The latest version at the moment that I'm recording this video is version 8.4. You can use the same software for programming previous versions. So always make sure you install the latest version. So there is a demo software that you can uh, install on your machine, but there are some restrictions for the demo version. Uh, you need to get a full version if you want to program a logo in production environment. It's not an expensive software and you can just get them from your local sales representative. And if you already have an older version, 
version of the logo, you don't need to start from scratch. And for example, if you have a logo version 8 or 8.3, you can just go and download the upgrades for your logo to upgrade your existing logo to the latest version, which is 8.4. So the Logo Soft Comfort is a Java-based application, so you can run it on Linux, on Mac, and uh, Windows for sure. That's one of the features that I really like about Logo. So you are not just restricted to the Windows operating system. So the installation is fairly easy, similar to any other Windows application. You just run the installation media, and after following the steps with just a few clicks, your Logo Soft Comfort will be installed on your machine. So once you install the Logo Soft Comfort on your machine, there should be a shortcut on your machine desktop. So you can just double click on that and just wait for a few seconds until the Logo Soft Comfort is open. So that's what you get when you open the Logo Soft Comfort software. First thing you, you need to know, uh, Logo supports two different programming languages. The first one is FBD or Functional Block Diagram and the second one is Ladder which most electrical engineers and technicians feel more comfortable using Ladder compared to FBD because it's easier to understand and overall I also use it in many projects. So as you can see when you open the Logo Soft Comfort, by default you will be navigated to the FBD diagram but you can just quickly go over here on this menu on the upper left side. If you just click on that, you can select between the ladder or FBD. For example, here I just select the ladder logic. And as you can see here on the main menu, my program has changed and I can just use different instructions to write my program. Choosing between the ladder or FBD uh, programming language is totally up to you. You should see which programming language you feel more comfortable, but you should bear in mind FBD programming language has more advanced functions compared to the ladder logic. We will go through different functions in different videos, but for now it's important to know which programming language you want to go with. For now, I'm just starting with FBD. And as you can see here, the programming environment or ID is fairly simple. On the left side, you have the tools palettes and you can minimize or maximize it and on the upper side you have the diagrams which includes your programs and logics and on the lower side you see the instruction sets palettes so we will go through different instruction in different videos but as you can see it to summarize you have different functions for or instructions for digital manipulation, analog values, some basic functions such as AND and OR, and basically logical operation and a special functions such as timer, counter, and so on. We will use almost all of them in different videos, but for now it's important to know where to get those. And to use this instruction, you can just drag and drop them into your diagrams and you can just use the wiring tools to connect different functions together. Similar to any other application, applications. Logo also comes with some standard Windows toolbox such as new open close and also edit. So there are just many options. I'll try to go over different menus that you need to know but of course you can just go to the help menu if you need to know more information about particular menu. And one unique thing about Logo that I like, I like to see this in other Siemens and other vendors application, is the context sensitive help. What does that mean? I can select this menu from the help and now if I click on the any section, it will provide me with more information. For example, if I just click on one of these options over here, as you can see, it will tell me more about this functionality or feature that I just click on the zoom out and as you can see, I can get more information about that, which is really handy when you get started and you want to learn more about different options. So the most important options that, or menu that you will deal with is the tools options. You will use this uh, tools option for transferring your program between the logo and your PC, for setting up the properties of your logo, setting up the clock, and setting up advanced options and so on. So for example, as you see, if you go to the transfer menu, you can just download your program uh, from the PC to the logo, or you can upload your program from the logo to the PLC. You can remotely start and stop your logo. You can factory reset your logo and many other options that are totally self-explanatory. Another important option is the setting of your logo itself. If you just right click on your program, or, or your diagram and go to the properties, you will notice that you will have two groups of main settings. 
One is offline and one is online. Offline settings are those that you need you can change without connecting to your physical logo. When you download your project to your logo, all these settings will be transferred to your logo. For example, you can define your hardware type. Uh, here I have a logo 8, it could be logo 8.4. You can select it from here. You can adjust different IO settings such as the analog inputs and output. As I just showed you, you can change this on the logo hardware as well, but it's always easier and more convenient to do them from the software. You just want to change from the hardware if you don't have access to your laptop. Also, you can set up the password for your program. You can define what to be shown on the display when the logo is powered on. And again, this was also accessible on the hardware menu as well. And overall, you get more options here compared to the menu on the logo itself. The online settings are more important, but you need to be connected to your logo. So if you go to the online setting before applying any change because they are all grayed out, you need to connect to your logo. Just enter the IP address of your logo and then hit the connect. And now as you can see, the menus are available for setting. From now on, you are interacting with your logo in real time. So be careful what you're changing. So the first thing, as you can see, I can see my firmware version. This is the same information that I can get from the logo display. Uh, I can assign the IP address of my logo. I can set the clock. I can change the operating mode. As I mentioned, uh, logo could be master or slave. I can set up advanced features that we have already explained in different videos, but we will go through them again. For changing some particular setting, your logo has to be in the stop mode. That's why when, when I go to different setting, for example, the email setting, the software asks me to go to the stop mode. So this is important if you are working on a logo in the production environments, if you hit the stop, your logo will not execute your logic which can cause some damages. So be very careful with that. That's uh, pretty much it for the online and offline settings. So we can just go back. And uh, another important thing to know, logo programming is done in two different modes. As you can see over here, we have a diagram mode and also the network project. Uh, so we will start with the diagram mode if your logo is not connected to the network. If you are not using your logo in the network mode, that means you have to program your logo in the diagram mode. But uh, as we explained in other advanced videos that we use logo for, for example, connecting to MQTT brokers and so on, or if you want to communicate over Modbus data communication between different devices and logo, you need to go to the network project. Again, don't worry about this section at all. We will explore them later as we go in throughout the course. But for now, it's important to know just to start with the diagram mode. And the last thing to end up this video is uh, the diagram editors. As I explained before, you can just drag and drop different instructions to your diagram editors. You don't need to select any option for doing the wiring, but uh, you can just drag and drop different pins to connect them together. Also, if your program is getting more complex, for sure you don't want to have all these wires from left to the right and up and down. So that's why you can use this labeling or cut and join connection in the logo. What does that mean? You can just, let's say I have an input and output, so I just connect them together with the wire. And now if I just select this menu, I can cut this wire. And as you can see, an, a label will be automatically added to this so I can freely move the right side and the left side to organize my program better. Okay, I think this video is getting too long and I'm just going to cut here. And uh, I hope you got the foundation to get us started with logo. And in the next video, based on our curriculum, we are going to create a new project and we are going to all the instruction related to digital inputs and outputs. We are going to use them in real life applications and we are going to write our first program for the logo. I hope this video was useful for you and until the next video, have a great day or night.